Hello everyone online. This is Xiaqing from Johns Hopkins University. We are uncovering the role of head flexion during beam optical traversal of cockroaches. As we all know, animals are good at traversing complex terrain. We can see this cockroach is traversing this grass terrain by transitioning between locomotor modes. However, how robust transitioning emerges from neuromechanical interaction is not well understood. Understanding of physical mechanism of how such transitioning emerges can be really helpful to solve other engineering problems, like designing a robust mobile robot. We have been envisioning having robots to help us for different applications in our society. We already have many robots that can move really well in lab and some of them even have started becoming a part of our life. For example, the robotic vacuum cleaners are widely used in families, and self-driving cars are on the way of doing so. When we look at how the robots solve the problem of locomotion in complex environment, they usually do that by avoiding obstacles. So here's a video of a self-driving car. To move in a street, it first use sensors, typically cameras or radar scanners, to scan the environment and generate a geometric map, where any objects is treated as an optical on the flat ground. Then the controller plans a trajectory to avoid all of them. It often has to transition between driving modes to reach its goal. However, there are many applications where the robots are required to traverse complex terrain with many large opticals even comparable to their body size. However, even the best terrestrial robots struggle to traverse this terrain because we don't have good understanding of neuromechanical interaction for transitioning. So study how an animal robustly traverses a complex terrain where interacting with the terrain and transitioning between different locomotor modes can be insightful to guide us develop a mobile robot. Here we look at cockroaches traversing beam opticals. Our previous study found that the cockroach traversed these opticals using two modes. In this pitch mode, the animal tried to push and rush through the beams. But when the beam stiffness went high, the animal transitioned the pitch mode to this roll mode. In this mode, the animal first pitched its body, but quickly found another way and rolled the body into the gap. To understand why they do this mode transitioning, we created this simplest model to describe the system. The cockroach was modeled as a rigid ellipsoid, and the grass was modeled as a rigid plate with bendable torsional springs at the bottom. So the beam could bend to different angles when the animal changed its position on the orientation relative to the beam. The potential energy of the system is the sum of gravitational energy from the body and the beam, and elastic energy from the beam. Here's the potential energy landscape when the cockroach is close to the beam. Given the cockroach's position and body yaw, the potential energy of the system could be a function of body pitch and body roll. In this section of potential energy landscape, we may find two kinds of minima. The blue dot represents the minimum that the cockroach keep its pitching up state and push through the beams. While well, the red dot represents the minimum that the cockroach roll its body and go through the gap. The animal transition from pitch to roll state could be regarded as a system moving from pitch to roll basin on the landscape. And also here's an energy barrier between these two basins, shown as the black dot line. An animal must overcome this barrier to transition. So why would the animal bother to do so? Here's a video of the landscape evolving as the animal moves forward. In this experiment, we use a very stiff beam. If they don't transition and stay in the pitch mode, they will be finally in this pitch basin and will be marked as blue dots. You can see two of them. If they transition to the row mode, they'll finally be in this row basin and will be marked as red dots. You can see a lot of them. Because the beam is too stiff to push through, we frequently see that the animal was attracted to this pitch basin first, but then quickly transitioned and was attracted to this row basin with low energy to traverse. But how do they transition? In this video, you can see that when the cockroach is interacting with the beam, its body oscillated up and down very fast. 
In a previous study, we found that in a passive robot, the kinetic energy from body oscillation can help them overcome potential energy barriers. However, for the animal, although the kinetic energy fluctuation is comparable to the uh, barrier, the animal already transitioned before the potential energy barrier has reduced below the kinetic energy fluctuation level. It suggests that the animal must do something active to enhance transitioning. It is well known that besides the passive mechanical interaction, the animal can also make active adjustments using sensory feedback. So we hypothesize that the cockroach actively adjusts its body and appendages to overcome the barrier and transition. We did the experiment again and found that the animals are using three kinds of active adjustments. First, the leg sprawl. The animal sprawl its leg inward while rolling its body. Second, this differential leg use. While rolling, the animal extended one leg to push the ground while retracting the other to support its body. And third, the head flexing. Before and during rolling, the animal flexes its head up and down frequently. These three uh, observations support our hypothesis. Then to go further, we may ask for the mechanism through which these adjustments would benefit the animal. For leg sprawl, we speculate that the animal might sprawl its leg inward to reduce stability. For differential leg use, we speculate that the animal might do so to generate roll torque. So both of the behavior may help the animal roll and transition. But what for the head flexing? How does active head flexing help the animal transition? We first hypothesize that the cockroach flexes its head to lower the transition energy barrier. We modify the energy landscape approach. To make the head flexion into the model, we partition the animal into three parts, the thorax, the head, and the abdomen. And each part was modeled as a rigid body, and they are connected to each other with rotational joints. By the definition of potential energy of the system, we can get the potential energy landscape and any pair of fixed head and abdomen angles. Here is how the potential energy landscape evolves as the animal moves forward. When the head and the abdomen angles are set to that when the cockroach is running without obstacles. Here we make a representative section of the landscape. On this section, the blue dot is the pitch minimum and the red dot is the row minimum. To get from this pitch basin to this row basin, we found a virtual path, as the green line shows, linking the pitch and row minima. Then we get the point with the maximum energy on this path as the saddle point, it's this orange dot. So the saddle point is just like this picture shows. To go from this basin to another basin behind the hill, the best option is to go via this saddle point in the middle. So the energy barrier between this pitch and row basin is defined as the energy difference between this pitch minimum and the saddle point. Here we calculate the barrier between pitch and row basin on the landscape using different head angles. First, we set a head angle to 15 degree, which is the average head angle when the cockroach is running without obstacles. We generate the potential energy landscape from the critical points I found the energy barrier. Then we set the head angle to 45 degree and did the same stuff. When we compare the barrier we got from both cases, we can see that the barrier did not change a lot. So we conclude that the head flexion does not change the energy barrier. So our hypothesis one was rejected. The question remains that why the cockroach was flexing its head during traversal. Recall that the animal is using sensory feedback to interact with the environment. We got our new hypothesis that the cockroach flexes its head to sense the terrain and guide traversal. To test our hypothesis, we modify the robot by adding a flexible head. And we add force and torque sensor on the robot's body and head to sense the terrain. We think that the animal can adjust the body pose using legs, but the body orientation results from not only the leg control, but also the physical interaction with the obstacles. So the body is underactuated during interaction. To mimic how the leg motion affects the body motion during traversal, we'll add these underactuated control on robot's pitch and roll. Here's a CAD and real model of our robot.
We let the robot run into the beams and use the tech to track the robots and beams kinematics. This is the trial we have just got. We haven't had any head flexion or under actuated heat and roll control. Meanwhile, we collected force and torque data from the body part and head part. Here are the preliminary force and torque measurements. We will study how the head and abdomen controls change this force and torque data systematically and try to understand how to use them to guide the robot traverse the obstacles better. The big idea is that the conservative force, which should be the gradient of potential energy landscape, must be dominating the dynamics during traversal. So if we could measure the force during this process, it may give us idea on how this landscape will change and how to make adjustment to better traverse. To sum up, in our study, we first found that cockroach actively adjusts its body and appendages while traversing a layer of grass-like obstacles in the form of adjusting leg sprawls, differential leg use, and frequent head flexion. Then we further discuss on the function of head flexion during traversal. We rejected the hypothesis that head flexion will change the energy barrier on the potential energy landscape using simulation. Then we develop a new robot with four sensors to test how to use force information to get the robot to better traverse the obstacles. I'd like to acknowledge my lab mates and others who have helped and our funding sources. Thanks.